Hi guys, welcome back. So have you ever done something in the heat of the moment that you regretted later? Maybe said something or acted out or had a meltdown, right? We're, we've all been there. Maybe you were just so overwhelmed with fear or anger or just so stressed out that you did something and then later thought, man, what was I thinking? Well, the explanation is that you weren't thinking. Your brain was hijacked. See, the brain has two minds, one that thinks and one that feels. The downstairs brain is in charge of survival, and the upstairs brain is in charge of rational thought. This is where the prefrontal cortex is, and that's the part of the brain that handles executive functions like planning, goal setting, and insight. The limbic system actually sits right in the middle, and this is where the amygdala is, and your hand is a really great model of the brain, so it kind of looks like a brain, right? So here's your downstairs brain, upstairs brain with your prefrontal cortex, and then right in the middle is the limbic system, and that's where the amygdala is. The amygdala is actually the emotional sentinel of the brain. It has a lot of power. Any kind of strong emotion or anxiety, anger, fear, betrayal can trip off the amygdala and initiate a rush of stress hormones that actually flood the body before the prefrontal cortex, the upstairs brain, can actually respond. Daniel Goleman coined the term amygdala hijack to explain how the downstairs brain can take over to survive, and when it does that, it actually puts the upstairs brain or the thinking brain on hold. Neuroscientists have found an inverse relationship between the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex. So when the amygdala is active with blood and oxygen, there's actually less activation in the prefrontal cortex. It's like when we're really stressed or angry or upset, the brain sends all the fuel downstairs to survive to the feeling brain rather than upstairs to the thinking rational brain. It's kind of like losing 10 to 15 IQ points temporarily. One way to prevent the amygdala hijack is to incorporate the practice of mindfulness into your routine. So MRI scans now show that after regular mindfulness practice, the amygdala appears to shrink and the prefrontal cortex, the part that thinks, becomes thicker and stronger. The neural connectivity in the brain also changes. That connection between the amygdala and the rest of the brain gets weaker while the networks that are associated with attention and concentration actually get stronger. So what is mindfulness? Well, it's just paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present, without judgment. Just tuning into your senses for a few minutes at a time can actually produce really significant results. So you can do this in a few simple steps. The first step is to take notice. What are you paying attention to right now in that, that very specific moment? Where's your head? The second step is to shift your attention and zero in on your senses. Give yourself permission to push everything else aside, even if it's impatience or frustration or stress. Clear your mind of all your thoughts and inhale for a count of six, exhale for a count of six. As you do that, listen to your breath. Feel the expansion and contraction of your lungs. Now, pay attention to what you feel, what you taste, what you hear, what you smell. Look for something that you've never noticed before. What are you grateful for in that moment? Whatever it is you're thinking about, sustain that focus for a minute or so to savor that moment and the mindfulness that you're experiencing. This last step is really important because it's what allows you to extend the psychological present and actually create neural connections in the brain. We all get hijacked at times, but having an understanding of what's actually happening in the brain is the first step of putting the thinking brain back in charge. Want to learn more about the brain and how you can make it work for you? Check out my book, Happy Hour with Einstein. It's one part neuroscience, one part gratitude journal, and a splash of inspiration.